look for the finals, I hope to see you there. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, first we have to get out of the loser's bracket. <laughs> you I can believe. do it. I believe. You can do it, guys. Alright. Uh, Thanks for coming in, God Thank Let's you, see. guys, and, uh, yeah, thank you for your time. So, anyway, um, on to the next match. We're cast casting match. Ooh. <coughs> Alrighty. Oh, and they're all waiting for you. Oh, well, we're wow, all waiting for special. you. <laughs> all right. So that's how long can you can you not join? That's the question. <laughs> oh, we've got so. uh, same. No, we've got a. Uh, I think this is group. Hang on, I, I got. I have the teams. I have the teams, so I can I can look this up. We've got um, team eight versus team five. I looked it up. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Congratulations! So, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yay! Um, oh, I know. Anyway, though, I mean, let's let's talk about this for the final time just before we move on in that previous game. I know I have mentioned repeatedly, like I'm not taking sly snipes at the Brown team, but mm -hmm. would you argue from what we've seen that you know that Brown did have a clear and defined game plan that they were ready for that match because it felt as if maybe they sort of set foot in it and said, okay, guys, let's do the best we can right. rather than let's yeah. be very, very practiced. Let's, you know, have a, let's have a real intent shot of this. It was, it was definitely the experience of the players that came into it. I mean, that's, that's obvious through any match, but um, I think definitely the, uh, the team, or I think it was team pink, if this is the correct color, uh, they definitely had the, just experience of the experience and knowledge of the map that really gave them that advantage because mm. we saw both both teams did open up with air brown a lot earlier than pink but in the end pink was just overwhelming in the skies yes very much so once that happens i would argue that there was no realistic way brown could have possibly done anything to really counter it mm -hmm. now interestingly enough we do actually have a planet with a moon and not just any old moon Ooh. but a well sort of annihilator thing i don't even how in <laughs> good heavens are you gonna uh, use this thing for a halley how in good god <laughs> there is room to build things on it this entire <laughs> band around the middle is um is completely flat and then of course these are pathable oh okay i was gonna say like yeah. good goodness like look at this thing it's like <laughs> A legitimate, le legitimate, goodness gracious, I am out of it. A legitimate flying saucer flying around Earth right now. Yeah, so here we are anyway with the first multi planet system that we've actually casted today. Um, but the question is, how big is orbital really going, how big a role is orbital going to play in this, would you say? I don't think it's going to play much. I mean, even just looking at the planet itself, it really seems like it's more of a flashy, like, hey, we can smash you kind of deal. Because there's 95 metal extractors on uh, Caladian when there's only 8 on the uh, pseudo Annihilator. Hmm. So, I mean, let's actually talk about Caladian a bit and the whole system in general. Mm -hmm. the, the way that this works from what I've seen is generally the meta teams, or at least perhaps the most established meta, is you will put two players, at very least one player, in the navel, into mm -hmm. that side. Um, but to be honest, it is more or less always two. Two players in the navel who will try and get T2 navel as soon as possible, and as soon as those leviathans come out, I mean, take a look at the terrain from where the water is. Is yep. there a safe spot anywhere on the planet from those guns? Nope. It's nice, nice and evenly down the middle, so... I think this is a legitimate, balanced map. I mean, it sounds weird, but... Uh, it definitely gives naval something that naval usually doesn't have, which is well, <coughs> value. Um, usually you've got <laughs> you've got naval that's just kind of going down a river, or it's stuck in a choke point to the point where it just doesn't do anything. You also have a very large map, which definitely gives that benefit to both uh, docks and air. So we'll definitely see that. My biggest concern, though, is typically this is what seems to happen now. We did cast these a couple times where it was the uh, much larger maps with Tivanita. Tanks are just so slow, they're just useless. Because why go with something that is a slow push tank when you can, you know, go... Instead of three vehicle factories, you can have three air factories. You can have three bot factories. You can pressure with the bots while, you know, you're going to send bots out. They might get there in four or five minutes. Where tanks, it might take them ten. You know, why send it with a slower unit? Oh, definitely. I mean, speaking of slower units, you know, the blue team is the first in the water here with red following a little bit slower. Like we just talked about, naval on this map is generally 
sort of the meta the accepted way forward and yet both teams have been very very slow to embrace it neither team is even looking at considering to build a t2 factory yet mm -hmm. i mean we just talked to gandalf and you know he has sort of given us a, a breakdown of the merits of rushing that t2 and yet here yeah, they are not doing it actually building tanks of all things so i think we're in for something very very uh, different well um Hmm. Maybe I want to say it's just the map. I mean, as we've seen in a lot, a lot of different maps have different styles and tastes, which you just have to acquire and you just have to accept. Um, interestingly enough, I am I'm quite interested to see why they're going with these tanks. I mean, I know it's a it's kind of a straight down the shot path, but why not go for harassment with docks? I mean, maybe it's just because of how close and kind of organized everything is. Maybe. Yeah, it could well be. I mean. The docks certainly make sense because they are amphibious, they can sort of ignore the water, they can get over in unexpected places, cause a lot of harassment, destroy some eco, you know, do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. The tanks, though, not being amphibious, are pretty much forced to fight over this whole land bridge area, which is very, very narrow, unsheltered from the naval side of things. Uh, no real protection from air, no real worth in building, you know, static air defenses here, mm -hmm. because you're not defending any mechs. So, again, the tanks. Very, very, very strange. I'm very strange. Actually, yeah. I'm, I am a bit speechless. I have to admit, I have absolutely no idea what either team could be thinking by doing this, unless it were to defend. To I was going to say, maybe it's just like uh, when we were playing on the map with uh, with Tivanita, when uh, building naval, it's just you're only building naval just to kind of counter your opponent's naval, and that's really it. So maybe we might just see one or maybe one or both teams just kind of build some walls here and then just kind of ignore the planet or ignore that section while going for this naval. We do see um, blue is starting to kind of build out with some narwhals, with some barracudas, getting some anti air out with these fabricators. They are slowly starting to push out while these uh, bombers and uh, air units from uh, blue start kind of killing off these poor puppies with uh, the tree economy because of course everyone knows tree economy best economy oh definitely and you know as everyone else also knows the best thing to do is to burn down your opponent's trees get in there with some set fire to it screw the ecosystem you know it's no well look they're doing it i mean you can we can see it firsthand red's trying to start fires on uh blue's side it's <laughs> It's silly, but when you know when you see the tree economy at its finest, it is incredible. It can easily sustain you know a base and a half. So speaking of sustaining in a base and a half, I mean, Red is expanding out, building these sort of proxy proxy naval factories using naval mm -hmm. fabas and air fabas. Mm -hmm. This is quite strange. I mean, as everyone knows, using the fabas is less efficient than using the commander, and they are actually tanking on eco. Maybe it's a like to kind of catch them off guard now I don't know if that's really the best decision because I mean as we can see um, blue is moving out with a lot of barracudas and narwhals so that is a very strong uh, orca killer but maybe this is well I don't know if it's the best decision because as we can see right here um, blue is starting to build some uh, torpedo launchers and that's gonna effectively shut down anything that comes this way and of course one uh, you know, one or two anti-air fighters will easily clean up anything that's here until they get either more fabricators or they just send more air units. And here we go. Blue's just going to kind of poke this off. And I don't know. I think they're maybe just trying to throw Blue through a loop by just doing more unconventional things. I'm not sure how well that strategy is going to work out for them. I think that you may definitely be right. I mean, everything that we're kind of seeing them do at the minute is a little bit unconventional in a way. They've, mm -hmm. um, they've built up a pelda to defend this land bridge. They've actually ruled out the tanks to defend it as well. I think... The th I th <laughs> Maybe they're just weird. paranoid. Think... Maybe they're very yeah, scared of exactly um, not knowing how Blue's going to play, so they're assuming that they're going to go for something as crazy as going across this land bridge, even though it's mass naval, or uh, mass naval is a better option, and they're just kind of saying, well, it might happen, might as well prepare for it, but... This is where I'm going to say at what cost. They're at they've I don't think they've been at 100% since the game started and really they've just been tanking on eco while blue has quite easily stayed at 100%. Now even going for what I would almost want to call the crazy tier 2 air and honestly there's nothing stopping them. I would say that it's about time. I mean, it's 7 7 minutes 40 into the game. We did <laughs> seven say minutes. in the previous game <laughs> yeah, but you know, from what we saw in the previous game, um, Gandalf, Lionel, uh, Tractor, they, mm -hmm. they rushed that T2, very, very successful. In this game, they've elected for something completely different, and even their opponents have not actually 
kind of went for a push to T2 until this mark in the game. Very strange, you know. Again, Gandalf gave us a really good breakdown of why the T2 is powerful. It right. gives you that huge eco boost, it gives you the options, and also forces your opponent to react because once they see that T2, they panic, they think, oh, I've got to get T2 too, but they may not be prepared to do that, thus causing them many, many problems. Right, right. So, why but they do that, game, yeah, they, they do that, and then it's way? like, where is it? It's it's not here. It's everything that they've been talking about, you know, that, as you were saying, you know, he brought it up and he was like, he was, you know, it's, it's a necessity, but here they are building defense building dogs building everything but the tier two that they've been i would want to say very strongly trying to support it's a necessity but not in this game <laughs> it's yeah, a necessity no, but, but anywhere else yeah this land bridge as well has been you know something that we've talked about to death but back on the subject of sort of the paranoia i think that maybe both teams just sort of started the match neither was willing to be caught out by their opponent on this sort of land battle and ironically enough they've both built up sort of equal equal ish forces to face each other eventually in a big showdown <laughs> do you think do you think that um uh, that uh the red team might not have actually had some practice time on this map it's entirely possible i mean i don't know what the training schedules look like or even if they managed to do any practice at all mm -hmm. on this map um, but from the way that they're playing, I would have to say, you know, just as in the previous game, I made some comments that in, we're not intended to be disrespectful towards Brown, but we're perhaps a little bit brutal. I now have to turn it around on the red team, the victors mm -hmm. from the previous game, and say, do they really know what they're doing here? Or are they just throwing out, you know, what they think might work? Because it doesn't seem like they have a clear and defined strategy. I think it is... Um... I think we're, I'm going to pin it on they knew what they were doing on the previous map and that's why they won. But on this map, they don't really know how to play what I would want to call the standard. Um, or what I, actually, the, I would call it the 60. I use this when I'm streaming. It's called the 60% the build. It's not a build that works on every single map. It's not, uh, but, you know, flip a coin and it will usually work. And as we can see, I really want to think that maybe Blue's taking what I would want to say the 60% build and they're really running with it. They don't really have a quote-unquote clear strategy, which is quite obvious. They're kind of building everything, they're building walls, they're actually getting tier 2 naval. But they're also playing very slowly, they're playing very passively. They're not really trying to kill red, but they're re adapting to them. And they're what I would want to say is they're improving against them. Yeah. Um, definitely, I mean, Blue is, it seems to me that Blue has taken sort of a bit of a hesitant stance in the game. They've kind of built up the land units to prevent being caught off guard. They've built up the naval, they've uh, built up a bit of air. And now they're kind of looking around, seeing that Red isn't really harassing them too much, isn't pressuring them too much, and they're actually winning pretty much every engagement they're taking. Mm -hmm. and deciding, you know what, let's let's take that T2, can we, can we take this now? Um, let's push on this land bridge maybe, you know? Right. Like, can we can we do something about that? And I think I think it almost perfectly sum, sums it up in this little naval fight that's going on here. You know, uh, Red didn't really start up start up with the naval, even though I think it was safe to say just by the planet's kind of taste itself, it was very obvious that they should have gone naval. And you know, um, maybe this is the foreshadow to it. But as Blue continued to push in and push in, Red just has more production. But Will we even see them be able to get that extra second wave of production just because the commander was there? Red actually now being the first to move across the land bridge, I don't think this is the best decision. They're going to be met with effectively uh, a wall of turrets, lasers, and very unpleasant things on the other side of this bridge. Yeah, Blue has prepared for this. They're all ready for it. Um, and at the same time, you know, despite that, what they're not prepared for and what they possibly don't know about is Red has built this teleporter here and has built this teleporter on the front of the combat fire to get units to the front a bit quicker. Mm -hmm. But the real question is, is that actually going to benefit them at all? Considering that Blue's now getting up that T2 naval, which, in my opinion, is the deciding factor in the game. As soon as those Leviathans come out, Agreed. it's I just going to be I would GG. agree with you on that, definitely. Maybe this is a, I would almost want to say, the Hail Mary of uh, Red Team. Because they are I definitely, they're throwing I mean, all of the units they have uh, around the base. There are some docks here, but that, I think that's just really to ward off the, the bombers that Blue has been quite uh, fantastically microing around. And yeah. they're going to attack into what would basically be a really bad decision. What choice do they really have at this point? Um, you mentioned Hail Marys before, mm -hmm. and I don't think, you know, from our perspective, yes, definitely. From their perspective, I don't think they know that things are quite that bad yet. They may mm -hmm. suspect that they may be freeing around the edges now, but they probably still think, you know, all right, we can, we can do we this. We can break this, right, right. Yeah, yeah. 
until they reach that wall, at which point they may quickly well, reconsider. Well, they do see it. Um, looking at their vision, they have the radar, and they do know that it's a thing. Ev well, actually, they're at 60%, so they probably don't know that it's really as bad as they see. They do know that there's uh, turrets. They do know that there are some walls, but they haven't actually seen all of it. So I think yeah. it's going to be a, a the landing zone massacre here, because once they get there, there's just t the uh, double-barreled turrets. There's a pelter going up, and... They're going to quite easily do this. Now, looking at the economy, though, um, this is just something I would like to tap at. Uh, red now, or blue, excuse me, now going actually below red. So maybe and this getting is the reason why. Ooh, excuse me. Yes, the most important reason, though. So um, they do have well, the Tier 2 Fabricators, so this will definitely be able to uh, bounce them back eventually. Uh, though it is the naval, so while there is some metal, I think they maybe should be trying to get some tier 2 vehicles, maybe, but, you know, at this point, why bother? You've got Leviathans, just end game with the Leviathan. Yeah, very, very true. Um, I think that this is maybe a bit of an overreaction by Blue. I think they went into this game not really sure what to expect, as we talked about before. Uh, they've done much better than they perhaps thought that they would so far, or at least mm. they've encountered less resistance, and now maybe it's ticking over in the head, oh, we can win this, we really got this, we, we need to get these Leviathans, we need to get, you know, this tier 2 eco, and they're kind of overreacting in a way by having no less than two, four, six, no less than eight air fabricators building at the mm. same time. That's, that's a pretty hefty drain on eco, and really for what benefit? Well, um, the air units, is there, oh, it's a shoot 2, okay. Um... No, definitely, I do agree with you. They also, if we just, you know, kind of hinting at that tree economy, um, they they do have some tree economy that they can use these fabricators to reclaim, so uh, they will have quite a bit here, and I think this has hit maybe a bit of a stalemate heel here, because neither side really wants to do this. Now, Red does probably realize with these boom bots, or these boom bots, excuse me, what the heck are boom bots here? Uh, f these dock spots uh, kind of scurrying across, they will see this Leviathan literally murdering them by the droves. And uh, these torpedoes cleaning up a little bit of the skirmish uh, bots, but fabricators actually kind of moving over here. They might start on the teleporter. They will start on a teleporter here, so we might see the first actual successful invasion by one of these sides. I think that you really hit the nail on the head before with that comment when you said neither side really wants to do this. That definitely is the feel I'm getting from the game. It seems like, you know, Red knows, okay, we're on the back foot a bit. Let's not mm -hmm. do anything too crazy, anything too risky. While Blue thinks, okay, we're on the front foot a bit, but, you know, let's, One, let's take not it do safe, anything to right. risk that. Yeah. Pelters, though, starting to pick off at these uh, units here on the uh, land bridge while Blue making a very strong push. I'm actually surprised. I didn't. I might have just missed these units that were just ch chilling here. Um, Blue getting the Tier 2. More Tier 2 air. Red, I think I'm missing something here because whenever I think Tier 2 air, I think of this very cringy, very risky decision here. But it seems we saw it last game, and obviously it didn't work out. But these guys might try and do something a little bit crazy here. They could well, but it seems as if Blue is making their move at long last. They finally completed the two teleporters linking their armies together, mm -hmm. and they're pushing on the Red's base here now very, very heavily with these right. land units. Well, Red also retaliates, moving in their units, backed up by sniper bots. But, you know, the difference in the two attacks is very, very clear. On the one hand, you have Blue pushing across relatively open terrain with a very powerful force. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you have Red attacking into walls, turrets, taking very poor trades just in an attempt to do something, to do some Definitely. damage. Definitely. Uh, these bots, or these bots, excuse me, God, I'm tired. Uh, these vehicles of uh, Blue now trying to kind of group up. That is a lot of vehicles. I didn't realize how much physical stuff and presence they had, but um, quite easily able to just get uh, units. And they'll probably easy, quite, uh, quite easily be able to clean up these docks. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, but they will clean oh, these yeah. up and then probably move down into the air factories and if they don't kill the a lot of the base, they will definitely do some very serious damage. I want to say it might not be killer, but it will probably uh, be hev heavy or sufficient enough that it will probably hinder red to the point that they die. Say Blue has also underestimated Red in a sense as well, because Red has managed to break through that defensive line, they're mm -hmm. all pushing in, but Blue is now responding with what we kind of always knew was going to be the deciding factor, moving the Leviathans over, which is just absolutely shredding that land-based oh army. Oh my goodness, goodness the range yeah. all the way from downtown. Now, this is what you can't argue with on these maps. There is no safe zone left for, mm -hmm. for Red once these Leviathans really build up the critical mass. It's very quickly getting there. 
definitely. Now, this tier 2 air, again, it's, it's, why is this tier 2 air? Why do people keep thinking that this tier 2 air, is it, maybe I'm missing something because of their mystical special abilities of looking like giant super mobile catapults, but they just don't seem to do it. I mean, you just throw a couple anti-air and they're done, but, um, the army of red, or blue, excuse me, has sort of taken a bit of a stall. Okay, they do realize that it's there, and, um, well, the push for red has died, so as uh, blue moves in, I want to say that this is going to do some super, super damage because there really isn't much else. There's some bombers, but I think there's plenty of anti-air in here to just clean up anything that um, red tries to throw at them. Yeah. Some docks. Red but is losing everything. Yeah, yeah. tier 2, eco, bot factories, production, it's all going down. Commander, as soon as blue actually sights it. And in the meantime, blue, still in a very comfortable position. You know, red's push has been stalled. They are trying to get another one going, but really what is it going to do blue can just decide you know what i'm there just going to move some leviathans yeah. over here and yeah there it is they realize now that yep. actually this is kind of over and the fireworks go off but will the rest yeah. of his will the rest of their team follow suit though just quickly on the subject of T2M before we run out of game time, mm -hmm. this here I think is the reason that people are building T2M, which is not necessarily the best reason. This single air faber that has come out, the T2 air fabers are very efficient, very quick, very agile. They can build up a lot of T2 economy in a flash, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, but the units themselves are disappointed, disappointing. While the fabers are excellent, the units are bad. Maybe Blue just thought, let's put up a T2, let's just put up that T2 factory, right. you know, we can use it right. to maybe contest the air if we need to, um, and in the meantime, we'll, we'll build up some eco with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Let's ask them, let's ask them now, because a lot of things happen <laughs> in this game that, is, I mean, it would be it would be interesting to know what the players were thinking as things went on. Of course, well, because we have a lot of theories. Um, but while you interview know. them, I'm actually gonna go to, gonna go run to the bathroom real quick. Mama Nature's calling, and I'm not one to miss her calls, of course. And I'll also get some water, so please uh, don't <laughs> don't harass them too much. <laughs> well, I'll try. Both All right, promise. awesome. I'll be right back. Okay. So let's see who do we want in here for an interview. We want Jonas Promethean. Hello, Jonas. Good to see you. So that that previous game that you just played, first of all, congratulations on the win. Very uh, very well fought. So Thank you. Ghost and I had a few questions as the game sort of shaped up. Um, there were a couple of things we didn't understand. Obviously, worked out very successfully in the end. But when you first started the game, you didn't elect to go for naval too early, and instead you went for tanks. So could you tell us a little bit about that? What was the thinking behind the tanks? Well, we uh, the key strategy was to get up the teleporter on the shore on the other side mm -hmm. of the island because it's really hard to defend on, on that particular map. Uh, if you yeah. don't have a lot of air to defend with, uh, we failed it once or twice, I think, and then we got it up. Um, yeah. And I don't really. I think in the early game, the tanks was there for defending that little passage between the islands, just so we don't lose that. Could have probably done that with walls and grandiers as well, but uh, we just. So we went for tanks because it's a narrow passage and we wanted to get the naval uh, dominance sort of to protect them from the sides. Yeah, and uh, that and naval dominance that really should. Well. Sorry, go on. I think we managed with that quite well, with the naval dominance. Oh, definitely. Once once that T2 Leviathan came out, once that factory went up, I turned to Ghost and I said, I think this is the deciding factor. This is going to break all stalemates. This will be GG. Uh, you yep. may or may not have known it, but on the opposite side, they hadn't started T2. They never finished T2 naval by the end of the game. And that really, I think, was probably the biggest downfall. I think in general, they weren't aggressive enough so that uh, we had time to build up whatever we could build up. Uh, yeah. We got up that, that tier 2 air in the middle of the base. Uh, I agree. I have lost in the game because we had a lot of eco then. I don't know how much eco they had actually. Uh, it was doing a lot of uh, a lot of vehicling on background stuff. So I didn't look a lot in their base. Wow, Ghost just uh, rattling with it. There was a time actually they overtook you in eco, 
and it was it was a bit of a shock because you were so far ahead in our eyes but at the same time it, you know as you were building up and they were also being hesitant we sort of looked at the game and it seemed as if neither team really wanted to make a decisive move it was as if you guys thought okay we're ahead let's not do anything to compromise that while they thought okay we're behind let's not make any crazy moves and lose the game outright you know yeah, so we, yeah we want we want to be to be really sure that we could do what we had to do but we need to do some form of like uh, hard strike somewhere and that was that what that teleport was for and then they went forward with their commander i think they lost quite a bit there uh, especially with confidence in what they could do and what they could not do uh, with yeah. that naval commander getting down to 50 percent hp yeah so it was it was a very very good game it worked out very successfully the um teleporters came out from both sides which was something that i personally wasn't expecting to see and you did you ended up doing a lot with these tanks whereas yep. you know from what i understand of the meta on these maps it's generally sort of whoever dominates the naval side of things then dominates the land on account of the leviathan's insane range it is true we just wanted to dominate the naval in one particular area to get up that teleporter because we know that it can be a real pain in the ass to get a teleporter up near your base on that particular map there's no way you can run I was actually yeah. going to ask, I don't know if it's been covered already, but um, has have you guys already gone over the thoughts and how you were just kind of playing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. Jonas, I would say Jonas more or less agreed that, um, you know, they knew they were ahead and they wanted to stockpile and make that final mm -hmm. push be very secure mm -hmm. in the win, while, you know, perhaps the red team, we don't know for certain, but it seemed as if they just really didn't want to sort of take that fight, knowing that they could lose everything if they did it wrong. Right. Okay. Um, the naval, I noticed that... Um, they were i think they were the first to actually have a commander uh, legitimately start building the uh, naval factories was that just you saw that the naval was there and it was just kind of filled the space or were you just you noticed that the naval was uh, a legitimate thing and you had to take care of it we knew that we had to do the naval uh, and i think that if it happened a bit later then it was probably just the player doing naval it was uh, ace of spades doing the naval i think he might just mm -hmm. have been a little slow uh, okay. We knew that naval was a big thing. We did naval on two locations on on both sides of our base. I think uh, that right. might have slowed us down a little bit. I need. I want to ask. We knew that naval was an important thing. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I we wanted knew, to ask we because. Knew that naval was an important thing. <laughs> 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 sorry. You guys are terrible sorry. with this. Absolutely awful. You know, I'm sorry. I just came back. Be courteous. He's a guest. Yes. 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 No. My apologies. Um, when you guys noticed that they were building those proxy naval factories and you started to build uh, those uh, torpedo launchers, what were your thoughts going through your heads? Because I know me and Lucky Red were just like, wow, they're, they're building proxy naval. Wow, yeah, okay. With fabricators. With uh, air fabricators. And all things. That was very bizarre. Well, basically just, we have to get those the fuck down. <laughs> so I tried to and do it there first, but I didn't have enough air at that time. So then he went for naval and torpedoes to somehow mm -hmm. at least limit what they could do with that naval factories, with his naval factories. Uh, and then after some time, I got them down with air. Okay. Uh, it was basically just, oh, look, they're doing that. We need to kill it. Let's do it. Awesome. Um, any other comments, Red? No, I think that more or less covers everything. Um, it was it was a really good game to watch. I enjoyed that immensely. You know, there was that whole stall in the middle, but it gave us time to kind of look around, see the interesting and unique strategies coming out, and ultimately, I think that maybe maybe your opponents on that map compared to the way they played previously, uh, when we watched them, just maybe didn't have as much experience with that particular map as you guys did. Oh, there was one final thing I wanted to ask. You no no team went for orbital. Did you not consider orbital important, or was was there just no time? We, we did consider orbital. Uh, I don't know if we even got up an orbital radar, but we thought about orbital and then we just started going T2 first because we thought that it would be a bigger victory for us or, or more. We could gain more from that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree definitely. That was that was a really smart decision and ultimately it's maybe what won you the game. Who knows? Um, <laughs> good play though. And, you know, good luck going forward. I hope to see you in the finals. <laughs> Thank you.